We're in the midst of a longevity revolution, which means that we are getting older as never before in the history of uh, humanity. In um, 1900, the number of people who lived to be 50 was a very small percentage, 3 or 5 percent would live to age 50. Uh, now the percentage of people who live to age 50 is in the 30 or 40 percent range, and the fastest growing segment of the population globally are those individuals over 65. That, together with declining fertility rates globally, means that we are living in an increasingly older planet in terms of the population. Uh, this obviously has many, many upsides it, because it means that people will be able to enjoy their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren, and enjoy a, uh, a retirement that was never imagined before. There are many reports that suggest that part of the um, cause of neurodegenerative brain diseases is the fact that people don't live healthy lifestyles. Uh, and this not only applies to brain diseases, but also cardiovascular disease, lung diseases, so smoking, um, obesity, diabetes, lack of exercise, paucity of social contacts, all of these can adversely affect the uh, health of an aging population. So I give talks to senior groups, uh, to advocacy groups, uh, to Penn alumni, and remind them that embracing healthy lifestyles can make a huge difference in their well-being in many organ systems, but it is a you know, healthy lifestyle with exercise, a, a, a diet that is rich in berries and greens vegetables and so forth and so on can reduce the risk for cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's disease. So I would, my major recommendation to people is to read about healthy lifestyles and embrace them so you can take charge of your own destiny with respect to disabilities that are associated with bad uh, or unhealthy lifestyles. Earlier disabilities are declining. That's not all just good medicine. It's people wearing seat belts, smoking cessation, they're doing things, exercising, better diet, uh, that uh, will uh, increase their uh, abilities to be physically active, cognitively active, and perform all their activities of daily living. Uh, so stereotypes uh, about aging can be, you know, deleterious. They can be self-fulfilling prophecies, and those stereotypes can persuade people that they are, in fact, old and uh, by implication decrepit, not able to do the things that they want to do. And I think that uh, doesn't empower people when you use those the stereotypes to uh, reach their potential. And there is still potential when you're 60, when you're 70, when you're 80. We have many, many stories uh, of people who continue to be product productive in, uh, in their 70s and 80s. One famous example here at Penn, uh, is Dr. Britton Chance, who we lost, I believe, last year, died at age late 90s, I can't remember, uh, 96. Um, I remember distinctly uh, trying to communicate with him uh, 15 or so years ago on a paper for it. I tried to get a hold of him, and he said, John, I can't talk to you now. I have." He was 80 years old. He said, I've got three competing renewals that are going in next week, whatever it was. So here's a man you know, who three research grants going in at one time is a huge undertaking for a 40-year-old. He was 80 and still uh, very productive as a scientist. And so I endorse the idea of reinventing how we think about aging.